jeans are basically jeggings. That's gonna be the first thing on this recording. That is to you and your jegging stories. It's out of context, fucking non sequitur. Jeggings. Yeah. Ooh, can't wait to hear this one. Well, on that note, I'm gonna roll up some headlights here and uh, get rolling. I'm gonna roll up some FSO here. Oh shit! Picture me and jeggings. Make sure I roll headlights, Scobo. You, yeah, <laughs> those high beams. Uh, are you? Do you have a fork on the table there, Spartan? For that, some forkfuls, red setter style. No, sir. I have a scale that will weigh to the thousandths, so I can uh, be uh, very accurate with my dosage. I have empty capsules that I get at. You can get them online, or you get them at the drugstore. I use only half of a capsule, or the, the bottom half, I guess. Mm-hmm. I put it on my scale and I tear it, which makes it go back to zero because I don't want to cheat myself any mess and make sure it's right at zero. Then I squeeze a bunch of shit into it and make sure that it's somewhere around 0.5. Somewhere around (laughs) (laughs) 0.5. So the keys to this are how much you put in and uh, the time you take it every night, right? Yeah, so it's 9 o'clock. Well, it's a little bit past 9 o'clock now. And so that's my time when I take it. So right now I'm at 0.4, so I got to go a little bit more. Don't cheat yourself. No way. No way, man. Spartan gave me this advice when I started taking this stuff. uh, And it was the greatest advice is to kind of go at the consistent time and then adjust your dosage. Or, you know, if if you uh, take your dosage later in the day, reduce your dosage, you know, that sort of deal. And that was because you woke up high, correct? Well, it's to try to prevent that. Um, I don't necessarily have an issue with that effect, but sometimes uh, it can be pretty extreme. I took a full capsule and that buzz didn't go away for like over two days, which was very, very weird. It's like disassociating when you when it lasts that long. You yeah, don't experience it, normal reality. I've done that um, and it's like you're questioning whether you're high or not. Exactly. Exactly. You're like, you're my back. You go to sleep, you're fucking out. (laughs) Well, it's weird. It's pretty weird to wake up stoned, right? Unless you really, really overdo it. So uh, it's a pretty odd feeling at first. Generally, the first time somebody takes a little too much, they just wake up like what they feel, what they always usually call it to me is a hangover. They're like, it's like a hangover, but without the pain and stuff. It's just like tiredness. Yeah. It's and definitely a cannabis hangover. That's how it, I would describe it. Yeah, but it's not tiredness it's, per se. It's more fogginess yeah. in your mind. It's like your mind's not clear. But for me, caffeine kicks that out. Uh, so, you know, coffee or mosh, whatever your choice of caffeine, that's what I would go for to clear that and up. another joint. And yeah. th- no, and then, and then, like I was telling Sequence, you could either reduce the quantity, like the weight that you took, or take it a half hour earlier or an hour earlier right so you can adjust it either way either by weight or by how long you have for it to get out of your system right it is potent stuff i mean not apparently for everyone because i've said this and i've had people actually dm me and be like you're a liar rso doesn't do that to me and like blah 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 whatever okay but <laughs> really but, i've uh, never had one like that that's fucking yeah hilarious. but uh it does for me and um I like to monitor my dosage accordingly because I can definitely overdo it. Yeah, I've never had anybody tell me in DMs that RSO doesn't work or doesn't, uh, they didn't feel it. I'm yeah, not, I've uh, had people tell me that it doesn't get them high and stuff like that. Well, the there are sequence some... underscore MI, his DMs are apparently open, folks. For oh, all. yeah, I read all my DMs, dude, there and I'll, I'll block you. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, uh, Shit, now I lost what I was going to say. There's something. About, what were you just talking about, Sequence? Blocking people on Instagram? Oh, no. I don't Dosage know. size? People saying it wasn't working. There are there are a rare occasions, but there are people that edibles will not work on. So if they're eating RSO, it's an edible. I mean, you have to digest that. And there's something in their metabolism right. that they don't metabolize that or whatever. Typically, <laughs> when I hear someone say that edibles don't work for them, all I'm hearing is that they don't know how to make edibles. <laughs> Typically. I mean, but I, I have met... Know, People, they say they buy edibles from, you know, dispensaries that were sure. tested and, and still didn't work. And for those people, I would say, well, try one of my cookies. If it doesn't work, then they edibles aren't going to work for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
So what I've noticed, even with uh, yeah, one of my patients specifically, I don't know if they want me to put them out there or not, but I'll, I'll tell the story. And I'll they always want out. you to dox them, dude. They always do. <laughs> put me on blast. But uh, <laughs> I've seen that certain uh, pharmaceuticals like antidepressants, anything that deals with uh, chemical balances in the brain, they, those patients can seem to have like an immunity to edibles sometimes. Like they can just take as much as they want and it does not affect them. Oh, they're, interesting. Just, they're, they're just blocked. That's really interesting. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, that is interesting. One of my things about edibles is consistency of dose. So, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sure. Uh, Always. My thing, my thing on consistency of dose is if you are not making them yourself and if you're even not making them with a consistent flower of a certain percentage or a certain style that you're doing things, it gets really, really complicated to know what you're taking. Yeah, you can mix stuff in the wrong order and end up with clumps of stuff in your cookies or whatever and end up with like four out of your dozen cookies that are medicated. So like there's a lot of different ways to mess it up. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think with my, um, those kinds of medicines are, aren't they call or don't they mess with your, uh, your dopamine? Yeah. Dopamine They're blockers. Or blockers. Yeah. Blocker, so, something like that. And that's what I think. Um, I don't know. I could be wrong. I, would I think that's, that's, that's tied in with out. your high dopamine is going to be released. Yeah. I would think. We're not doctors people. No, this is Clearly. me. This is me trying Damn to figure gym, this out I'm online. I'm just trying to figure it out. Thinking out loud. Let me search this on WebMD real quick. Yeah. Just like most things that I share, it's stuff that I've experienced being a, a caregiver. I've seen this in two different people now. It if makes sense take, if, if that's working. If you take dope. some, if you take some medications, I think that interact with what is it? Um, citrus medicine, uh, not citrus medicine. What am I talking about? Um, I don't know. If, I think they're SSRIs. Serotonin. Kind of, well, there's some type of serotonin booster medicine. Yes, but they that's are, what I was thinking over here too. What what they do is they they don't process citrus or something like that. Just they block something to a citrus. So like a lot of the terpenes in cannabis end up getting blocked just the same. So it, there's like a, there's a crossover. So like it, basically if you have a citrus um, caution, like, you know, with the medication, like you shouldn't eat citrus food or you shouldn't have certain types of food with your medication, there's a good chance of the, the grapefruit. That's what that is. Yeah. yeah Don't yeah. take grapefruit juice if you're yeah. heart medication. And, and a lot of times like cannabis won't work with those types of patients because it's, it is, it's a dopamine blocker or something like that. It's a, some type of inhibitor or serotonin inhibitor or something like that. It's serotonin absolutely inhibitor. wild. I don't fucking know. Somebody could really probably make a YouTube career out of that just because people love those YouTubers that just try to take as much, you know, as they can of anything. Somebody that could take on any pet they wanted. That's uh, that's from Dr. Ethan Russo, I think, talks about that stuff. I uh, definitely heard that in the Cannabis Pharmacy, uh, the book that does reference a lot of Ethan Russo's work. <clears throat> Cannabis Pharmacy by Michael Bex, I think, is the author on that one. Um, really, really good source of information, but they, they kind of break down. Edibles also, like, they, um, they get processed by the liver. When you smoke, it doesn't get processed by the liver. So when you eat cannabis and eat THC, THC is obviously in the acid form in a raw state. Then we decarboxylate it into THC, and then we eat that. Well, what happens when we eat it, it goes through the liver, is it converts into 11-hydroxy-THC, which is almost a more potent form of THC. It's a more effective form of THC. That's why they become more uh, potent. That's why edibles last so long. That's why they're so psychedelic because it's almost a completely different thc type molecule i'm not sure what branches of the molecule are missing or moved or different or how many extra hydrogen molecules are added to it but it's sounds like 11 of them i don't know um but yeah that's basically 11 hydroxy thc and with edibles like you can do sublingual tinctures and drop it under your tongue and put it sublingually into your bloodstream like through your mucous membranes and you know, like artery it'll hit you faster and it won't go through your liver. So it won't convert. So you can actually take edibles without it converting into 11 hydroxy THC. It's actually more like smoking cannabis. 
probably a shorter duration, probably a milder buzz, <clears throat> things like that. But with the ability to probably put more cannabinoids in your body sublingually without smoking them, without those, you know, with some might consider adverse effects of obviously like getting too high or overwhelmingly high, things like that. That could be a really pro tip for somebody that needs a instant relief that can't smoke. Cause we all know like to get that instant kick, you gotta, you know, take a couple hits or whatever. Edibles take 40 minutes. I used to put it right in the tincture and yeah, put it yeah. right under the tongue. Yeah, I agree. It's going right in. Well, I used to make the alcohol tinctures with the, you know, highest proof alcohol that I could find, which for me was like 156. But uh, after I made my tinctures, what I would do is because I try to hold them as long as I could under my tongue. So I would take like a small sip of something, whether it's like my coffee or whatever water, and then put a couple of eyedroppers full there, hold it for like 60 seconds. It doesn't burn as bad. And uh, I would start to feel the kick in for myself personally, probably in about 15, 20 minutes. So that's, that's like the magic coffee. I remember giving some tincture to sequence to do that for a few times in the morning at work. No comment. No comment. It's real common to do an infused coconut oil for coffee too. A lot of people like that. What do they call that? Bullet coffee or something? Where they put the- Greasy coffee. Yeah. <laughs> My aunt has got some kind of weird thing that she swears by and says it gives her the best nails ever is when she takes, because she's one of my patients, she, when she takes some of the cannabis coconut oil and puts it in her coffee and stirs her coffee with her fingernails. She says it's, a, it's the best hardener she's ever had. So you could just skip the coffee dressing. and put the coconut oil on her fingertips. It might be the heat, though, with the coconut oil that she's makes it. She's setting them in there, coffee. right, to get yeah. that fat? Looking at those nails interesting i don't have nails so i can't try that i guess uh, another one we can uh, bring up that red kind of talked about for a second why the edibles might not work for someone is uh they didn't decarb them because if you make some uh say you like harvested your plant froze it for maybe a day and then extracted it it wouldn't be very activated well i think that's one of the things is when we say it works or it doesn't work i think we're really talking more about the uh the actual mental side of it rather than the physical side because THCA is one of the better things that you can use if you are dealing with any kind of inflammation so so like a nice tip for caregivers take it or leave it is if you have a patient that's dealing with something and they need a high level amount of uh, cannabinoids in their system and they can't be like blown out like not everybody can handle a thousand milligrams or whatever just don't decarb it you're getting the medicine in them without the uh i guess be the pain relief but still i don't know enough about you're still getting the pain relief i guess you're yeah some decarbing too you would you would get a little bit i i didn't know about decarbing for like the first i don't know like 10 years of making edibles i used to just make edibles by throwing a shake and uh in some brownies just there you the go. Batter, man. Yeah, just toss in the batter, toss in the oven, and kaboom. But you're, you're it's decarbing while it's cooking in the yeah, it's brownie it itself. Fully 100, percent but mm -hmm. you're gonna get ripped, you know. So I wouldn't say that. It's this is from the guy who takes forkfuls of RSO. Average. I think he put a sufficient amount of shake in. I mean, it probably yeah, no, was no, like I would, go, I would go like chewing on a biscuit or something. I don't know, like probably like quarter quarter ounce to a batch of brownies or something like that. I don't know. Like eight squares, you know. So, Dude, but like with like, play. It was brickweed too. So, I mean, who knows what, how low the percent that stuff was? The stuff was probably ten percent. Well, apparently, you said it got you blown out, so it was doing its tricks. Yeah. But if it was being brickweed, it probably was decarb because that shit's been sitting around. <laughs> That's a good. Point that too. downtown Julie Brown. Let's say, did you notice a difference when you started like decarbing it? Like, was it a, a much stronger like body effect, like really taking you down? Oh, dude, I mean, we're talking the first couple, few times that I I had edibles, so I mean, yeah. blown out. I can't I can't remember that. It's going back a long time. <laughs> it's too many highs to go, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. At least a decade and a half ago, 15 years. I've, I've told this story a couple of times, I'm sure, but uh, I let, found some weed hanging in the garage that had been there for the whole year and, and smoked that, and it tasted absolutely terrible, but it fucked us. Yeah. <laughs> good night. Yeah. Super stoned. <laughs> 
So maybe it was. So somebody had asked, and I'm curious about this question too. Like, what happens when you smoke THC, like not THCA? Like, what happens when you actually smoke dicarboxylated THC cannabis? Maybe it that doesn't high. have like a final form, like a Pokemon. You, you know high. what I mean? You get more high. I don't you know. You get fully because... high, probably. I mean, you, none of this waste. Yeah, yeah fully high. high. I would yeah, think I'm that like, you would I have a lot of CBNs, though, that you would be, you know what I mean, that are contributing to that fucking plowing effect of the, you know, stone. Well, well, what if it wasn't a time ish that time thing? What if you just stuck it in the oven and did it real fast and converted it, and you really didn't have any CBN, and just smoked it? Or like, distill it. You could distill. I never smoked like. Uh, or no, you'd have to still decarb it. So if you distilled THCA, then decarbed it, it could only be THC. There'd be no, then no, smoke no, that. THC. Then smoke that. What would that be? Yeah, that, would, that, would be that would be a bunch of guys sitting around high as fuck talking about some crazy. Does, does what would that be? In case, he had a lot of CBN. His CBN levels were high because his weed. Oh yeah, there's no THC left in that shit. Probably, probably if there was, it I can't believe that THC can hang around for over a year. Can yeah, it? I do know, like four four years, four years before it degrades, like I think ninety percent or more. Okay, so Something this was like only that. a year. So yeah, yeah there's yeah. probably some THC, yeah, yeah. but there's a lot. There had have been a lot of CBN. I... Oh, I hate goodbyes. <laughs> 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 Lloyd. Just go. Damn, buddy. Push the goddamn button. You heard what she said. 